President Putin there. Let's cross live to Washington. We can speak to Professor Shirley Yu, visiting senior fellow at the London School of Economics. Uh, Shirley, thanks very much indeed for, for joining us. I just want to preface our, our interview, really, with one or two lines coming out of the State Department, uh, which has expressed concern about China's alignment with Russia, has warned of consequences of China providing military aid regarding uh, Ukraine. Uh, and with this one line from a State Department spokesperson saying, Beijing claims to be neutral, but its behavior makes clear it is still investing in close ties to Russia. Uh, so some pretty direct finger pointing towards China's uh, relationship with Russia. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, David. During the conference call, uh, she did stress political cooperation, and I think he's alluding to some forms of a potential peace deal there, which is very different from Russia's quest for military support. And um, the fact that uh, she did not even mention Ukraine in the call suggests that he wishes to isolate its role in the war, and I think uh, uh, China's strategic interest is in Russia itself, not in the war. And given the current situation, any military support from China would be considered too costly to be uh, practicable. Do, do, do you feel that, because of exactly what you said, that the State Department's line is actually quite aggressive, isn't it, when President Xi seems to have given little indication that he's getting any warmer towards Moscow? Uh, I could consider that to be a preemptive warning, uh, but quite uh, like uh, what you and I have uh, just talked about, uh, I don't think it's likely that China will step in to militarily intervene in the war itself. However, uh, China does have a lot of uh, strategic interest at stake here in this uh, greater Eurasian situation. The war in Ukraine really has not so far imposed any net economic cost to China. Contrarily, China has actually profited uh, from the situation there. She profited not only from a Russia at war with the West, but also profited from a Russia that is being weakened. Russia has been diverting much of the world's uh, military attention and uh, geopolitical conflicts to Europe. And uh, that has given China some uh, very precious breathing room in order to regain the economic strength, but also to build up the military power. And had there not been the war in Europe in 2022, we could just imagine nearly all of the world's uh, geopolitical political uh, tension would be centered on China. So I think yeah. from perspective, there would be a calculation within him that wishes uh, Putin to continue to uh, fight as a proxy against the liberal democratic order, to test the limits of the West, and to maybe to find the fragility of Western power. These are valuable lessons for Xi to learn and to watch, which he cannot learn from any textbooks. And additionally, yeah. China... Can, can I just ask, sorry to interrupt you there, I just wonder also, um, time is, is running away from us a little bit. Um, it's quite a bold statement to say... Uh, uh, throw out an invitation publicly for a state visit for it then not to happen. So what is your best guess as to whether there will or won't be a state visit for uh, President Xi? Uh, it might be considered a... Uh a political uh, protocol issue uh, when it comes to an invitation not being accepted. But I think uh, we still have three months to go. Uh, China still has uh, the twin congressional sessions in the first quarter of the year. Rebooting the economy is a major priority. China is going through a major public health crisis at the moment. And so I think in the coming three months, uh, there might be some uh, uh, development uh, in that uh, bilateral front. Very uh, intriguing moment, isn't it? Um, uh, Professor Shirley Yu, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.